This video will focus on the non-invasive measurement of tau in an daily echo lab. Left ventricular diastolic time constant, tau, is the most established index to describe diastolic function. Traditionally, it can only be measured in a catheter lab, meaning, invasive, expensive and time-consuming. So, tau is mainly used in basic research as gold standard when diastolic function is involved. Now, we can measure tau in an echo lab, and it is super easy. We just need to measure the time period from 1 meter per second to 3 meter per second on the descending branch of mitral regurgitation continuous wave Doppler spectrum. Then times 1.2 is tau. Detailed introduction on how the formula is deducted can be found on website floating here. Next, let's try the application of tau in some cases. The first one is a patient with normal systolic function and diastolic function. Tau is 1.2 times 30 milliseconds, equals 36 milliseconds. This is consistent with the previous reports from catheter labs that normal tau is less than 40 milliseconds. The second case is about a patient with confirmed mildly decreased diastolic function. Tau is measured at 48 milliseconds, which looks reasonable. Please be noticed the mini step on a Doppler spectrum is 10 milliseconds, thus, the measurement of T1 to T3 is usually 30, 40, 50, 60, or 70 milliseconds. The third case is a patient with moderately decreased systolic function and diastolic function. Tau measures 60 milliseconds, which is consistent with moderately decreased diastolic function. The fourth case is a patient with severely decreased systolic function. Measurement of tau is 72 milliseconds which means severe diastolic dysfunction. According to ASE diastolic function guideline, some of the patients in this category could be diagnosed with mild or moderate diastolic dysfunction. Simultaneous measurement of tau, so far, always suggests severe diastolic dysfunction. In mild and moderate systolic dysfunction, tau measurement is roughly consistent with ASE diastolic function guideline. However, in severe systolic dysfunction, tau measurement always leads to severe diastolic dysfunction, while the guideline diagnosis could be different. The same sarcomere carries out both systolic and diastolic function. No wonder both systolic and diastolic dysfunction are pretty matched. Both are ATP-consuming processes. Or, diastolic dysfunction is a little bit worse. Which is consistent with the common sense that when cardiac function is compromised, the diastolic function is affected first. According to the ASE diastolic function guideline, some patients with normal systolic function could be diagnosed severe diastolic function or some patients with severe systolic dysfunction could be diagnosed a normal diastolic function. We think those scenarios are debatable. Tau is well accepted as the best index to describe diastolic function because it is directly related to how powerful the cardiac muscle is during early diastole. All the indexes adopted in ASE diastolic function guideline are indirect descriptions. Hopefully, in the next version of ASE Diastolic Function Guideline, tau can be part of it. ASE Diastolic Function Guideline has limitations. Assessment of diastolic function is unavailable for patient with atrial fibrillation, fused E and A, waves, severe MAC, or sometimes simply cannot determine. Tau measurement will not be affected by all of those but at least mild mitral regurgitation is a must. Pretty much when we can measure DPDT or PISA, we can measure tau.